Sometimes it's like, I don't know, I don't want this one because... Uh... Maybe some moments when I do like this. <laughs> no, no, you did it very well. <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Your pupils, three Russian in the final. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Good job, good job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, we have some strong guys, yeah, that they could uh, represent Russian and uh, also European school because uh, after me they will be studying, they will study in uh, in Europe for sure, and after we'll see, they will come back. Maybe maybe they will stay. It depends on them, on their choice. You have many experience in competitions. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> I I would like uh, if you can share an um, anecdote about. Uh, Uh, about them, about the competition of, of you? Uh, for me, competition is always something serious. <laughs> Was something serious. Now, uh, when I'm in jury, it's another thing. <laughs> We are from the other side of the table. Uh, for me, it was just uh, big motivation. For one, one year before the competition, I started to prepare. It was really, uh, really direct from me, for me. Yeah, and uh, I think it is good because uh, you practice a lot of more. You check your possibilities, uh, you check yourself, uh, how you can concentrate, how you can prepare. It is a little bit another style of life because it is uh, very stressful. Yeah, and on the moment you prepare one year, for this moment, for these 15 uh, minutes, for example, on the first round, and uh, you, should, uh, you should be in a form, you should do everything what you studied before, so, mm -hmm. yes. Can you uh, make a, a d advice to the finalists of the Andorra Sachs Fest? What advice? They should be concentrated, they should... Uh, uh, show uh, all their possibilities on a hundred percent if they can and uh, I wish them good luck and repertoire is really good because it's it is a really huge contrast between two pieces so we can we can look how they can react on different kind of music how they can control the process of playing with orchestra and they will be solo piece also so which advice i think they know everything <laughs> they know everything already the most important for them is uh, concentration and of course find good reasons usual but concentration of course this moment that we we need to disconnect from the saxophone How how do you disconnect from saxophone? Because I, I imagine that uh, all the time playing, all the time master class, all the time uh, making things about saxophone. But I think that you need sometimes to be oh, yeah, Nikita absolutely. only the person. Yeah. No? yeah, it is a good question because now you have a lot. I have a lot of concerts and master classes, uh, so it is it can be danger for me as a musician uh, because uh, each year you have not enough time to practice yourself just concerts <coughs> and master classes maybe one time i will stop say one year do nothing <laughs> we'll see but uh, i i try to stay in a form to play always uh, um, as good as i can Uh, of course, I I have a family. I have two children uh, from one wife. <laughs> <laughs> It's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I should take care of them. And uh, yeah, it is. Of course, it is interesting. The career of um, soloist uh, performer. You visit a lot of people. You travel a lot. You see different countries, different cultures. It is a very good experience for me. I hope it helped me in my, in my music. Uh, uh, but 
You know, there are a lot of musicians who stop uh, for some period of them, their life to performing, and after maybe 10 years, they, they begin, they start again, yes. Why? Because they want to find inspiration somewhere. And we always need to find some inspiration. We always hope that, especially when you're a student, that somebody will help you, will give you advice. We wait speech of professor, we need help. And when you stay alone after finishing conservatory, you should think what I can do. You should, you should feel yourself as a source and uh, it's you now. You should share. You should share your energy, your knowledge and uh, it is another kind of thinking. In my pedagogy, I try to explain to my students that some, um, one day they will stay alone. Because a few years ago I was a student, I was in, on that situation. And now I'm teaching and I'm sitting in the jury, so... <laughs> and uh, it will happen with them in several years, very, very soon. So... But do you practice uh, some sports or some... <coughs> or do you read or do you... Th hobbies, you mean hobbies? Hobbies, yes. No. <laughs> no, your no, hobby before, is saxophone. Not only saxophone, no. Before I... I like to play football, table football. tennis, uh, billiard and uh, this kind of games, darts. <laughs> so... Uh, not really, I don't make any sports now, mm -hmm. for the moment. Before, before I, I told to you that, that you win the, this Dinant, uh, 2014, um, and it could be the sweetest moment in your life about saxophone, or maybe you have another uh, better moments in saxophone in your life. On the moment of uh, ceremony, I I feel nothing, <laughs> nothing. Yes, I was uh, happy, happy, yeah, but. The most big emotion, I think, uh, when I won some competition, it was in Düsseldorf when I was 20 and 21 years, years old. It was in Germany and uh, there were four rounds. And uh, when I passed uh, the final, the fourth round, I was shocked. I just come to a hotel, close the door and... <laughs> <laughs> do like that, but it was just when I pass uh, the, the final. But when I won, yeah, yes, I was happy. But it was not like uh, you know crazy moment. And in Adolf Sachs, uh, I was ready to uh, to be fifth or sixth or second prize. I was ready for that. So. It wasn't shocked. Uh, I was not shocked that I won, and so I didn't have a huge emotions on the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you understand maybe some weeks after what had happened for you, and, and it depends. After, for example, after the success, uh, you can disappear. Yeah, there are a lot of examples uh, that some people won a huge competition and after one year we don't know what they do and where they are. And some people take a fourth prize and we know they are, ev they are everywhere. They are famous and they are, it's not a question of famous, but they play really very well. They, they play really well. So. It, I explain just how you can use your winning, if it is a good word for this uh, meaning. So it helps, it helps. But now and Andorra Sax Fest is a huge festival and the level of the competition is impressive. Each year it's become higher and uh, yesterday I was on the concert of uh, Last winner, impressive, impressive. I imagine he will take part in the Adolf Sachs competition also. 
Yesterday was a concert, I repeat again, that it was really a winner. Yeah. Good, uh, good image of a competition, so... <coughs> I hope to see him, uh, Carlos. Carlos? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, everywhere on the planet. I wish him uh, good luck and uh, thank you, Carlos. It was a great time yesterday on the concert. Yeah, motivation for me to practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did it was your beginning in the music? Oh. It was with saxophone, with another no. uh, instrument? I'll, I touch a lot of things. I was dancing, make, making some sports, swimming and uh, also music. By, but I start with piano and at 11 years uh, only. I start playing saxophone. Yeah. But uh, before you love it, the piano or no, no. Just usually my parents uh, let me go to the uh, school, musical school, and uh, after some years, I said that I want to play this uh, trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> But you see somebody play, yeah, no? Yeah, yeah. I. I heard uh, someone on the radio and uh, on the TV and uh, jazz or yeah. classical. Jazz and classical for for children doesn't matter. Just I like saxophone and th that's it. Yeah, so I started and uh, immediately I get some results. Immediately I start take part in the different competitions. So it gives motivation. If you win some small competition, you get. Diploma, or chocolate medal, you know, <laughs> for, for children, is small things are very important. But you begin to com make competitions very young, no? yeah, like your pupil that he has uh, 17 years, yeah, years old. yeah, very good, yeah, one. yeah. And Valentine, Valentin Kovalev, uh, yeah, very good example. He started also very early mm -hmm. in Russia. He won already a lot of competitions, so for him maybe it is first uh, really huge international, real international competition. So I wish him um, good playing tomorrow, and also to my student to Mikhail Kazakov and and uh, for other for other participants because the jury and the public. We wait, we wait good performance. We also need inspiration by young generation. <laughs> I say young generation, I am still no, young, no, I no, hope. You're very yeah. young, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, we wait good music. Yeah. How many years uh, that you are teaching in Moscow? Teaching, I start teaching before I get Paris Conservatory. So, I finished uh, conservatory, Russian Gnesians Academy. In, And um, I teach already at musical school and uh, uh, conservatoire régional, uh, like college, the level of college. After I spent two years in France, I stopped teaching. And after I came back, so in general, maybe around seven, ten years. Seven years. You love to teach? Or you you prefer to concert make concerts? I prefer I prefer to I'm I'm not a teacher I think I just uh, I'm a performer I hope I'm a musician and uh, I just share my knowledge. my experience my knowledge with uh, my friends because we are almost. The same age, the same, the same kind of thinking. I'm just a little bit older, and uh, so I'm not a professor, and uh, I just give some advices. And as I already told, I always my system and direction uh, and the way of thinking is that you will stay alone after, not alone in the planet, but uh, so you should find inspiration inside yourself. Don't wait something from me. 
try to inspire me yourself and uh, so like that. After this moment that you win the adult sack competition, <coughs> um, you must to ask, I think, uh, and after what, no? It begins the uh, the time that you oh, are yes, yes. you are important at, uh, and now what? And after I can play whatever I want. <laughs> that is good because on the competition the repertoire is allowed. Uh, there are a lot of compulsory pieces uh, written especially for the competition. And after I feel free. I can play all music I love. So I play a lot of. Uh, transcriptions like Brahms, Bach. I feel better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your preference is all, always uh, classical music, not contemporary, no? Yeah, I don't separate this. Uh, I don't separate. There is a good music and uh, genius music, you know. It doesn't matter if it is contemporary or, or it is a transcription. For the moment, I play more transcriptions, and of course, uh, our classical saxophone repertoire also. So, at the moment, it's like that. Um, now <coughs> you are at classical in Andorra Sax Fest. What do you feel here with friends and, yeah, and all? Here uh, is good tradition. Each year, um, you made a festival, and our team, jury team with the boss, Ephraim, uh, we feel like a family. Yeah, we're, we are very open. I like very much that we jury <coughs> members, they cross with participants. There is no walls between us, so we can speak, we can, uh, uh, we can go to the restaurant together. So I like this uh, ambiance, uh, atmos uh, yes, atmosphere here, so it's, it's really friendly and um, I wait next year yeah, with, uh, without patience, so yeah, I love it, I love it. It is a good example <coughs> of organization and uh, it is an example, I think. It is a good, uh, you know, is face of a European festival, maybe of saxophone. Yeah, it's growing each year. Yeah, yeah. it's growing for from every point of the level of participants and 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 organization is always fantastic. Yes, so I have nothing to say else. So mm -hmm. I'm just happy with it. Many musicians, they are uh, so um, a little bit uh, autism mm -hmm. yeah. all the time with saxophone, all the time. Yeah, life, but uh, it arrives one moment that uh, you have life, no? And it's very important for the musician, no? Uh, we, for we sure. Be, be, before. For sure. And, and we have the example of Jean Denis Michard. Right. Uh, he, he took uh, two years for yeah. Yeah, himself yeah. Yeah, to yeah. have the. Um, to find this reanimation yeah. of, of yeah. Or to think about uh, your career, no? I I feel I think that you are very young. That maybe mm. is is early, but it depends the each each yeah, uh, musician. No? Absolutely yes. So I don't know when it will happen when I stop. <laughs> yeah. But now you have a yeah. very good moment. All the people want uh, to hear you in concert. All the people want to uh, work with you. Mm. Uh, maybe it's not the better moment. But, uh, <laughs> maybe yes, <laughs> and the 31 years is to stop. Yeah, we'll see. It is a natural process, I think. I suppose so. Um, they told uh, they're different kind of inspiration. Uh, not only saxophone. Uh, we have some problems in the world of saxophone that we always uh, looking for good saxophonists. We listen uh, CDs with a good performance on saxophone world. So the mind is not really open. So if you sometimes in the master classes ask uh, which pieces of Brahms do you know. Uh, we get a pose, so, so it is strange a little bit. So as a professor, we should show the world of music in general. They should go to the opera to listen to good pianists and symphonies and violinists and make projects together. 
to open their mind or but may, maybe you can find inspiration done in poesy or theater or in some sports i don't know for example you know the virtuosity of uh, football some football players uh, for example you know like example again messi and cristiano ronaldo they are not young men and the career of uh, football players stop earlier than career of musicians yes. and they are they're always uh, the best it's Good example. You can make trans transposition for yourself. What they do, what they think about, how they do it, how they always stay in their good uh, form, always on the top. It's yes, it's it's not a goal to be on the top. It's just to to be convenient with yourself and yeah. Never stop. Never stop. Yeah. And your next projects that you? Yeah, I have a lot of concerts in uh, in Europe, in Asia. Summer is completed, so there is no day of vacation for me this summer, for example. Yeah, but yeah, I should think about repertoire. I should change something in my repertoire, take some new pieces, which were never played on a saxophone, which I love. That is my project on the but, music road. But you, you make uh, transcriptions? Yeah. You are going to make? I think so. It's, maybe I will uh, make some projects with the composers, we'll see. And you, uh, did you play jazz or something like this? Yeah, I, just when I was really young at musical school, I play some. I play on jazz band in a baritone, on baritone sax, huh? so I improvise a little bit. But now, no, I don't know why. But I don't play jazz, but I love it. And in Russia, we also with. Uh, my friends in our association, all Russian association of saxophonists, we made a festival also. It was jazz and classic saxophone with competitions also. I always as associate the jazz only to uh, United States uh -huh. and little bit, uh, little bit of the occidental, but yeah. I never asso associate. Uh, thought that the jazz arrived to Russia. I mm. don't know what, because maybe... Uh, yeah, but era. In, in Russia there are a lot of jazz performers and it is uh, more popular, I think, than classic, especially if you, if you are speaking about saxophone. We have a lot of famous jazz men and uh, so jazz is really popular, but... Uh, my goal is to make classical saxophone popular also in Russia. Like everywhere, everywhere I think jazz saxophone is more popular in, in Spain in, and in, in France, maybe not, I don't know, in Japan also, maybe not, but yeah, it's, yeah, saxophone is, it's a very rich instrument, you can play everything, jazz, rock, classical music, so. Normally, when you play with orchestra, you only play uh, the mm, like solist, mm -hmm. or sometimes you play bolero. You so, play yeah. Uh, sometimes I have an experience to play with a great conductor in Russia, with uh, Theodor Kurenzis, who who became really famous um, conductor. So I play a lot of. Maybe all the repertoire of saxophone I play and, and, and contemporary music also. So it is good experience when you are a soloist, you play with orchestra and after you go down under the stage and you play, you wait just to, to play three notes. So three notes, always, <laughs> you know? all the time counting, counting, yeah, counting, counting. So counting. And it, is, uh, it is difficult, yes. Yes, we don't used to do... I prefer always to play, not to wait, and but... It is a really good experience for me. I, uh, 
There is music, music uh, that, uh, with orchestra and saxophone. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, few music with uh, when saxophone few is music, inside. Few yeah. Music. <laughs> yeah. But they're genius pieces, yes, like Romeo and Juliet, you know. Some pieces of Shostakovich, Ravel, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure for me. Yeah.